Item 7B1. Commissioner Sykes. Uh, yes, I've sponsored a presentation um, from um, well. Um, Passionate St. Augustine is here for uh, Operation New Hope, and um, I would I'd like to invite Karen Goldman to the podium to introduce the speaker, our speaker and guest from Operation New Hope. We're excited. A lot of work's been going on, so excited mm -hmm. about this. Present. I said there's been a lot of work going on to make this happen. Thank you. In St. Augustine. Thank you. <clears throat> well, as you've said already, I'm Karen Goldman, and I'm the executive director and co-founder of Compassionate St. Augustine. And <clears throat> Compassionate St. Augustine, along with our partners, St. Paul AME Church and Memorial Presbyterian Church, really want to thank Mayor Shaver, our commissioners, and our city manager, John Regan, for this opportunity to introduce you to Operation New Hope and its CEO and founder, Kevin Gay who will spend the next few minutes telling you about Operation New Hope's nationally acclaimed anti-recidivism program and the collaborative local effort now underway to extend services, their services in Jacksonville to formerly incarcerated residents of St. John's County. Well, good afternoon. My name is Kevin Gay. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and I want to first say a, a thank you to Mayor Shaver and the Commission for allowing us to be here today and spend the next hour and a half presenting with you. I'm just kidding. I'm just There's so a door right, there. door right back there. <laughs> um, we're very, very honored uh, to be here. Um, as um, Commissioner Nancy Sykes Klein just mentioned, there's a lot of work that's gone on over the last couple of years to get to this time and to this day. Um, I want to introduce, I have a couple of our staff that are here with me. Also, our Chief Operating Officer, Linda Joseph, is with us. Um, and also, our Director of uh, Community Engagement, Curtis Hazel, who also lives in St. Augustine, is here. But I wanted to kind of just give you a real quick background. Um, we began this journey about 20 years ago in Jacksonville. Um, and our work really began initially in community development. I came from corporate America had been on the board of one of the largest Habitat affiliates in the United States in Jacksonville and really got taken by the model of what the Habitat affiliates do and working in urban communities. And as I love about this community, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to follow the passion of this community with the mayor with regards to the addressing homelessness. There are a lot of important issues, and we all mm -hmm. get to them in different places. And, and I got to it when I was working with Habitjacks, ended up leaving corporate America and had an opportunity to start a nonprofit. And initially, it was about looking at some of the issues that our communities face in Jacksonville and, and trying to address some of those economic issues. Little did we know that we would back into working with, you know, uh, on an initiative that would lead us into the kind of crosshairs in our country on helping address this national issue of mass incarceration. And, but I've got to say, um, the last 20 years, involved in this work have been the most incredible 20 years of my life. Um, i got to tell you, and I tell people all the time, 25 years ago, I was a part of the problem. Because from a distance, I kind of looked at a group of people and assumed I knew a lot was going on in their life. And I can tell you 20 years later, that couldn't have been further from the truth. Now, let's see here. Um, as the young ladies who followed uh, Mayor Shaver a moment ago said, this really, though, is not about stats. It's about people, and it's about faces. And it's about humanizing these issues. And while, and I will talk about stats, mm -hmm. I'm always reminded the reason why we do this work is because of the faces you see here. And these are just a few of the faces that we've had an opportunity to work with that have graduated through our program. But what really is the issue? You know, most communities and the challenge that we have that happens in Jacksonville and St. Augustine and around the country has really been an issue that now is called America by surprise over the last five or ten years uh, with regards to the numbers and it's staggering. 2.3 million men, women and youth in our state and federal systems. Millions go through our county jails every single year. We had 32,000 go through our Duval County Jail alone last year. Um, and, and the issues that they face and the barriers that they face when they come home 
are absolutely incredible. And recidivism, as most of you know, and some people can't pronounce, like me at times, really has been one that has caught our attention because of the impact. Um, it's not a local, it's state or national issue, it's across. And it's not a Republican, a Democrat issue, it's really a human being issue. It's an all of us issue. And I gotta tell you that recidivism has many casualties. I call them that kind of the peripheral consequences of this incredible um, effect of our criminal justice system. Um, but the best remedy that we've seen and the data that's very, very clear here is how these lives are stabilized through a program that addresses their needs that leads to employment. Um, and I know that St. John's County is not unlike Jacksonville or Tampa and Tallahassee where we've replicated the issues that our employers face now with low unemployment rates. They're all struggling to find not people that can just show up to the job, but people that can show up, that can be reliable and be on time and contribute to their bottom line. And so a little bit about Operation New Hope. Um, we have, as I mentioned to you, began the journey de developing affordable housing, which we've done an incredible job over the last 20 years in Jacksonville. But what we learned during that, that the greatest asset in our community is not just the bricks and mortar. As a matter of fact, as you guys know, it really is truly the asset of our human capital. And, and I'm excited that, you know, we began this journey in building houses and learned through that process that we had an opportunity to create jobs. In 2003, President Bush got wind at what we were doing and asked us if we would be a part of launching a national initiative aimed at uh, looking at the impact that a job would have on reducing recidivism. It was incredibly successful back in 2003 and nowhere near the sophistication that we have today. And I'm very proud of the fact that now we've had the last four uh, administrations that have acknowledged our work. Bill Clinton wrote about us in a book in 2008. Barack Obama talked about us in a speech that he gave um, in Zanesville, Ohio, talking about programs that address important issues, and he listed us as one of those. In this administration, Jared Kushner invited me to be a part of uh, a learning uh, phase that he went through that led to the First Step Act, and to spend a lot of time with it. And so we've been intimately involved. And most recently, Ben Carson spent uh, half a day in our office and really came away from that saying that he feels, as he's traveled all around the country, that we offer the best prospect of a reentry program that can really transition folks successfully home. And so we've worked with 6,500 people. As I mentioned to you, we've been blessed by the opportunity to expand in Tampa and Tallahassee. We wanted to test our model to see if the work that we were doing was portable and tested it and, and found in the last five years that it can be replicated and replicated successfully. And what we've learned is that we now have a market-driven, proven operation in this field. And what we do uh, is we go into the, the prisons and to the jails every week, almost every day we've got staff going in and beginning to do that important deep dig that then leads to the folks when they come out, um, a very intentional case management program that we have. It starts off with an assessment. We do a deep, deep assessment. We were the first ones that developed you know, the risk assessment tools 15 years ago to help us get our hands around who, are, who we're addressing, what are the issues they have. Homelessness is a big one, but of course jobs, so the uh, impact of uh, mental health and substance abuse issues are there. But it's a very holistic, comprehensive initiative, a wraparound, if you would, a uh, four-pronged approach that we have um, that really leads to the success. And I, when we talk about ready for work, understand that the four and ready for work really is the strategic partnerships we talk about with community partners, alcohol and drug treatment, mental health, uh, training programs that we have with our colleges that have developed 12 pathways uh, for employment. The faith-based organizations that provide life coaching and resources and clothing and a number of things. And then, of course, our judicial system. And so that four component partners are critical in this work. But the main thing is that we want to continue to work towards getting our folks um, a living wage. And that's what we learned over the last several years by $8 an hour job, $9 an hour job is just not going to be sufficient when you have folks paying probation costs and court costs. And so we learned that by providing a 40-hour certification program, we got our colleges kicking and screaming early on 
to agree to take a nine-month program and take it into 40 hours, five days after they'd gone through our Ready for Work program. It really put our folks on a trajectory of being, being more marketable and being more marketable at a higher wage, and we're very excited about that. Um, in St. Augustine, i got to tell you, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've had the opportunity to work with Tampa and Tallahassee, some great cities. There's no place that I've been that has the synergy that we have here in St. Augustine. And so we began this process organically in a living room uh, two years ago that has led to trips back and forth with staff. Um, we want to we roll this in St. Augustine. We're excited about testing a new model, a satellite, that would allow us to come into St. Augustine, hire four new staff, hire them locally, um, and engage with the community and bring the partners together that would lead towards, we know, a tremendous return on investment that would mean lowering tax base uh, for taxpayers. Uh, we know that uh, employers are going to have a much better pool of uh, workers that are coming to the table. But most importantly, and I think that it's important to understand, it's one of the best crime prevention tools we have in the, in the country. And so I, um, I want to just say that we've had some incredible partners in this, Compassionate St. Augustine, Memorial Presbyterian Church, and St. Paul's, and hosts of others. I know that um, Chief Cox and others, John, we've had trips back and forth uh, between Jacksonville. And I can tell you that we would be very, very honored to have the opportunity to work in one of my favorite cities in America, in St. Augustine. So we thank you for the opportunity. I apologize for going over. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Why don't you go through your next steps? Okay. It's up there. Thank you. I, I was <laughs> kind of looking over it. Uh, um, so one of, you know, one of the next pieces that we, we know we've been working on, and I want to thank the partners um, that have been involved in this. We've been looking at a number of different places. Um, a couple of locations have been recommended. Um, we know that's going to be an important place to find a home. Um, and so we've, we've been vetting several locations today. Um, we want to, we're aggressively looking at the funding mix that we'll have. We've talked to John and talked to others. Um, we have funding through the Florida Department of Corrections, and for those who may qualify, we want to be able to apply some of those dollars as we move forward. But I can tell you with a lot of confidence, one of the things that we've been able to do very successfully is leverage local, state, federal, philanthropic dollars in this because of that great return on investment of public safety and reducing the tax burden, and we'll continue to do that. As we've done in every um, community that we've worked, we'll work real close with the stakeholders to raise those dollars. The great thing about it, I can tell you, is once we've had a chance to plug into a community, a community wants to see the sustainability of this operation because of the impact that it's having within the community. And so we want to continue to build on the network of stakeholders we have. Um, but I can tell you that so far, uh, the, the, the collaboration that we've had with the partnerships in this community have been absolutely wonderful, and we want to continue to build upon that. So with that, Great. I'll say thank you very much for the opportunity to present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just follow up with one statement. One of the things that the city, and we've talked about this because we've had numerous, John has had, John and I have both made the trip up a couple of times to visit your office and see your work actually in action. Everything from teaching um, formerly incarcerated to how to do a job interview, how to dress for a job interview, how to speak for a job interview, to, how, to critical thinking skills, teaching them critical in decision making, giving them decision making tools that will help them um, keep, you know, get a job and retain a job. But um, so I applaud you on that. But um, so we have been engaged. And we will continue to be engaged. But I think one of the things that the city can do, and we were asked early on to do it, is to consider a policy of essentially ban the box, which would be on the first application, mm -hmm. are you, you know, a convicted former, do you have a felony, et cetera, et cetera. And we have discussed this, and I would um, ask the commission to please, can, I would like the commission to consider um, looking a little bit deeper into our ability to do that in the future. And that's interesting because I, I was actually brought that issue up several months ago and mm -hmm. dug as deep as I could at that time, mm -hmm. and there were reasons given for it, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's fair to bring it up again. 
I think it's important. I had also asked kind of at a, you know, at a staff level myself, mm -hmm. but I think that this is an opportunity for us to discuss. I'd like to, us to discuss it. I think since we've just been taught and told mm -hmm. how valuable um, uh, formerly incarcerated people can be and enter the workforce yeah. and be yeah. productive citizens and live lives like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So um, how would you, you, how would you, you know, like you wanna, to give us a presentation? Back, or, or do you no. want to speak to it now or well, what? Uh, Mayor Commissioners, the first thing that's really important to know is that the city of St. Augustine hires felons. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we do. Uh, and our current application does uh, ask the question, have you been convicted of a felony? But it also states that this will not rule you out for mm -hmm. employment. Yeah. Uh, we had a wonderful presentation by a young man on this topic um, with yes. uh, the ban the box issue. Yes, we did a I survey of government agencies, mm -hmm. and uh, um, we have, it's about 50-50 of governments that have uh, banned the box, taking that question off the application process. Um, our labor attorney counsels not to do it, yeah. uh, but the um, but at the end of the day, lawyers are advisors, right? I mean, governments do mm -hmm. remove in the box. I, I mean, I could make it happen by myself with no involvement by the commission, but I think it's important to have uh, commission discussion of these types of talk topics where we're going. This is a very important program. Uh, I think uh, you, most of you know that I've been involved. Uh, with Karen and Kevin on uh, how to bring a facility mm -hmm. here. Uh, there are some very, uh, so I support it, and there's two major reasons for the city. One, uh, we uh, constantly have to fill uh, positions, and uh, having people ready to come to work to go through the mentoring mm -hmm. process to build skills, in uh, particularly in our um, uh, trade areas. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also meet professionals through this program, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it has the benefit of helping us uh, fill mm -hmm. our positions because uh, we're always hiring uh, and then secondly uh, it will also improve our diversity because most of the people coming through the program are african-american mm -hmm. so i support this wholeheartedly mm -hmm. um, the the secret is to open this program uh, is about three hundred thousand four hundred thousand for the first year so one of the things that compassion st augustine has done and i've assisted with this is have gone to cindy stevenson representative stevenson uh, and run the argument that um, the, the systems that create funding for the Jacksonville uh, operation should be uh, maximized for St. John's County for in the current uh, legislative session uh, to create uh, that fundamental uh, financial nut. And the state is the one who has a direct return on investment uh, by investing in this uh, because it cuts down on recidivism. Uh, now, um, uh, Karen, Ms. Goldman has gone to Paul Renner. I was not at that meeting um, to help build that fundamental case. Uh, and then after that, it starts to become the private sector and others to help, you know, feed in where they can. Uh, but I think, um, you know, getting that initial nut and the strategy of approaching the state is a good one. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've been doing this because my job is to fill our positions. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as you know, I'm committed to uh, all of the goals um, that we've always talked about uh, with regard to diversity. Uh, one takeaway from this meeting could be uh, a decision by the commission to uh, uh, authorize us to write a letter of support uh, for this, uh, this funding initiative signed by our mayor. Uh, that could be a takeaway from this okay. meeting. Um, so I'm trying to give you something to work mm -hmm. with. Where, okay. where do we go from here? And, and, and I think if the state, if there's leadership from the state, uh, and uh, from the city uh, and uh, and private employers, um, you know, we can really get this going. It's mm -hmm. it's about three, three hundred, right? Is that mm -hmm. the number, yeah. the target, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's an amazing program. I'm, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, so that's that's something to consider. Um, and is there? I don't know if we had any other specifics other than to start uh, making people aware of the program. Well, the idea today was to introduce mm -hmm. the initiative to the community mm -hmm. and give them their first opportunity mm -hmm. to speak. And um, but I would I I would like to bring a, a resolution to the commission if they're open to it, um, supporting uh, funding yeah. state funding for the program. 
Um, and I would also support uh, the city manager taking action to ban the box on applications um, in the future. I'd like to chime in here if I may. This is something that's near and dear to my heart because I have a construction company and we actually have a lot of felons that have worked for us over the ages. We don't use those terms. I think there comes a point in life when a person has paid their debt to society, then they simply become citizens. Yeah. And this is what we need to do here. And I'm so happy to see this is in front of us here. Uh, I strongly encourage us supporting this because at the end of the day, one of the things I need in my industry, and a lot of, a lot of industries need it, is a good workforce. We don't have it. We have this huge reservoir of talent that's being stored and then improperly used or not given the opportunity to be used and uh, or to benefit. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I've had personal experience with people that have done time yep. and uh, have come out and done a, had terrific lives and contributed to this, yeah, this town here. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I strongly encourage all my mm -hmm. fellow commissioners mm -hmm. and the mayor to yep. have the mayor sign this letter okay. and send it along. And I'm excited to have this in front Here's of us. <laughs> so, where's the letter? <laughs> I'll be happy to work for, uh, I will bring a resolution okay. that we can use to present to Great. our um, legislative delegation in the future. I had a I question. I, I had a question, too, so uh -huh. you go first. Just, um, has the county also been approached on this, you know, since we are in the yeah. county, the county, mm -hmm. you know, is larger than we are, it would be helpful to have their support. I at the state so as well. I think you hit the nail on the head because my I have had experience with the on this issue in working in the area mm -hmm. of criminal law, and um, the county asks they ask not only about convictions but about arrests, and it will prevent you from becoming employed even just an arrest for certain positions. So, and I to me that's way more problematic mm -hmm. than being asked about a felony conviction, which mm -hmm. you've paid, you know, right. you've mm -hmm. paid your price, and there are varying mm -hmm. degrees mm -hmm. that an employer may want to know about mm -hmm. because of whatever the circumstances were, but for an arrest that there was mm -hmm. never a conviction on. That's and again, wrong. this lies within the county, so mm -hmm. I would say that our efforts would have much more impact if we pursued to, communication to with Absolutely. the county on this, because mm -hmm. I have seen it happen, and it's, um, I, I, it's, I don't know what they're doing today, mm -hmm. but I haven't heard that there have been any changes. Well, well I think taking so the leadership role on the issue, maybe we can um, yeah. encourage work, because yeah, this right. was a request from Compassionate yeah. St. Augustine, and certainly um, they're ad you're taking a very strong advocacy role on these on yeah. these and issues. And maybe we can support them in pursuing yes. that yes. Yes. On That's a what I would, level. I would say. And we're, ta we're talking the ban the box. Issue. On the ban yeah. the box. Yeah, I, actually, yes. It was also the NAACP came to us mm -hmm. um, it, several months ago, and that's when we sort of went through the, the labor lawyer. Um, uh, so I definitely support this. Okay. I, I do have a, I just have a question as, Everyone would know I would have a question. So numbers, in other words, St. John's County is a very affluent county. Um, what Jacksonville is a big city. This is a little, honestly, a, a relatively small area. So in terms of how you think about, about the opportunity to help people's lives here, what's the opportunity look like? In other words, what are the number of felons who, who come back to our county, or do we know? Well, do can know? I just comment? I don't have that number, but it's funny that you bring that up because I did meet with uh, Karen Goldman in preparation mm -hmm. for tonight, mm -hmm. and one of the comments that I made to her was, oh, this is so fantastic because in a community our size, you're really going to feel the impact. Mm -hmm. And so, I, to me, I think, I mean, I don't know what the numbers yeah, are, Yeah, I just would me, like, yeah. I think that it's even all the more awesome because of the impact on a small community. You will feel it. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. It's just, I, yeah. I sit back and say, wait a minute, we got this $300,000 sure. nut. What, how many people sure. are you serving in vaccines? And that so, has been discussed. Yeah. So okay, I think good. That'd be great. I'm numbers. just curious. So we, we looked at it a couple different ways. We have folks coming back from the Florida Department of Corrections, and I believe we thought the number was about four five a month from DOC, but like we to have St. To St. John's to County. St. John's, yeah, to okay. St. John's County. And then so the number that really is, is I think, is, it could be the real impactful number, too, so on top of all that is, is those that go through the municipal jail you know, system, the county jail mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. And so you've kind of got feeders, 
Right. Yeah, we have a federal judge on our on our board, and now we have 4,000 men and women being released early because of the First Step Act, mm -hmm. released around this, you know, around the country. And so, uh, but the other thing I want you to keep in mind, and we're working real hard on that as well. So we think probably four to eight easily per month, you know, would, would be coming but in. What about in our from first the county year. jail who are doing up to a year, up to up to 364? Right. What are those numbers? Um, and or sure you wouldn't, or this would not. If, uh, if we've got eligible. Curtis knows. Well, well the, Curtis knows. It's, yeah. It's a, <laughs> yeah, about does, 30 a month is what is the numbers that we're hearing. Okay. And keep in mind, too, this, yes. I think the number that got our city, called our, our city's attention, is that nationally 30 percent uh, of our country has a record. And so mm -hmm. you have 14,000. So if you, you if you think about that number, you know, you probably have, you know, what, four or 5,000 folks in our community here who have a record. And what we've seen in our city and cities across the country, that is probably the primary reason that folks cannot get out of poverty mm -hmm. because people aren't willing to give them the chance to have yeah. that. So so we're kind of working, what we've been doing in Jacksonville is looking at, excuse me, is looking at funding you know, for folks being released automatically, mm -hmm. but then also looking at expanding that with our foundations and philanthropic okay. to figure out how we can address that person is five years out, but still okay. can't get a job. And so, because you remember in America, you serve two sentences. Mm -hmm. You serve two or three years from your sentence uh, through the Florida Department of Corrections, and then your second one is a lifetime sentence because we just never yeah. you know, forgive you. So that's kind of what we're, we, we, we conservatively looked at that eight-ish, you know, four to eight a month in the first okay. year kind of ramping up and then being able to expand out from that. So the, so let's just say eight times 12, so you're close to, what, 90, 96? So, so I, I just, I, I'm everybody. So you had, I believe, if I'm recalling correctly, you said that were 6,500 people you'd served in Jacksonville over the last 20 years. So that was about 350 annually. So well, how, what now are you we're up to about now, now we're That's, up to uh, close to 450 this year, maybe 500. We had 14 that started. Okay. Monday. Uh, this in Jacksonville, and we have a whole new cohort that comes in every week. So the, my question was just about really: is there? You're making a big bet to come here. Nobody thinks this is a bad thing to do. Is it? Is it real? Is it something that that? where you set up a lot of infrastructure to do this, a lot of services, a lot of folks. So my question was really was, and I guess it sounds like you've done your homework and it seems as if there's a population to serve here. Um, Ms. Shaver, we really said. do. Yes. Yes, we, think, okay. we, we think the, 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 the potential to have an impact along with the synergy okay. of the, the partnerships that are here could really be mm -hmm. a win-win. Okay. I, I would suggest. I think we're all nodding our heads. We're we're okay. ready. So, but I, I would suggest that you reach out to the continuum of care, because it's it, it feels like a lot of these services are synergistic or overlapping, and that's one of the things that continuum of care does is make sure that they're not. Absolutely. So, I, I think mm -hmm. that's. A, thank you. For and I'll just say you. one thing yeah. to, to address Absolutely. that because that's a great question. We want to always maximize our dollars yep. and make sure we don't duplicate. So we. We really, really rely on partnerships. And that's, what we that's do really important. well, though, is we have one of the, and these guys have seen an incredible data system. We mm -hmm. track every single day what's right. happening with each individual and any referrals yeah. that are made out. We ensure that the partnerships are providing those services. Right. And so. so that's that's perfect. And I think it's the right time because we, so because okay. the HMIS um, is getting up to speed. It's good. Okay. This is great. Thank you, um, Thank you. Mayor Shaver. Just so I can clarify the record. Uh, 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 Commissioner Sykes Klein has proposed a resolution which we'll draft bring back as quickly as possible. Um, my indication is there's support from all five commissioners for this, which would then, uh, and the purpose of the resolution is to adopt a city position on this uh, to help the effort in Tallahassee for funding. Yes. Is that a fair statement? Yes. I, yes. I, okay. I thought I also understood that Commissioner Sykes Klein was suggesting that we remove from our application. Uh, the box did it did that that was well, part do of we what we want to make that decision tonight or do you we haven't really I mean we haven't really I know I mean, yeah, we, we haven't we really have discussed ended, no. that we haven't really heard so maybe what we should do is have the labor lawyer point of view so maybe we, we hear should it. bring it up yes, bring it back. Discussion. okay yeah well, and, and we, we did a, a fairly substantial amount of work 
Uh, so we'll bring back a presentation on the work and uh, what other cities, what the different views are, yes. Maybe and a little bit of the history. The resolution. Um, we can add that to our yeah. task list. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll okay, make that on the uh, uh, to uh, uh, another topic, uh, certainly. Um, and for the record, we used to have a um, ban the box application. Uh, there was a, an event that triggered putting it back in the early 2000s. So uh, we'll, we'll bring back all that uh, and uh, move it forward. But I think, uh, didn't you mention that you have something on the application that says if you check this box, it doesn't preclude you from getting a job? That. And right. I think that's very valuable. And okay. even if it's not on the application, you yeah. can still ask. Well, well I, and I, I think let's, let's, this discussion has a lot of... Yeah, of we deal. need to hear... Well, let's just and I'd also, you know, I'd extend that a little bit further. And if I had my wish of wishes, I would have us, you know, having a policy, an aggressive policy, policy of hiring, aggressively reaching out and hiring, which would be, I think, Doesn't the city have in, in their in applications a pool. work history? Yeah, we, we, we run a we, background check. <laughs> if you've got a four-year void in a work history, that's the question that's, you yeah. ask in an interview. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this is very this, doable. It, it, there's a lot. Um, there's so just, many ways this is symbolic and sends a sem message yes. to the community about what we are about. And that's why it's important to me. So let's, it, let's it bring it back and then have absolutely. a discussion. And, and because it carries a different type of power yes, it does. if it's a commission it's policy Correct. decision. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, so Great. I think it's worth okay. discussing. Thank yep. you. Okay. Thank you okay. for Thanks. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Thank you. That was... This Can is, you all raise your hand so the commission so see get you get credit for coming that you're yeah, all with yeah, the commission. Yeah, we yeah, see yeah, wonderful, yeah, wonderful yeah, turnout. Yeah, Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I think staying this evening with us. Well, and, and thank you all for coming. And I think what has been, I think, I think it, the synergy of, of talking about our homeless population and also about people returning oh, to our community, yes. it, it reminds us of a huge part of the people we serve that we have to stand up for. So yes. thank you. All right, okay. so I think we're thank moving you. on to item 7C1. Me too. Oh, that, this that goes from you're right. I'm sorry. I forgot. Thank you. I was looking. I thought I was helping out. No, no, yeah. no. Not really. No, that's okay. David Burcham, this is uh, this is second, so it's, so it's a public hearing after each item. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mayor uh, and Commissioners, David Burcham, Planning and Building Director. The next three ordinances on the agenda this evening all relate. Excuse me. Those of you who are leaving the room, if you could be quiet, please. Thank you. <laughs> 